Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome back to our remote writing workshop. Today, we're going to discuss the various points of view an author can use to tell a story. Many people don't even consider points of view before they start writing and simply begin with what flows naturally. But there are issues to consider before deciding on which point of view or POV to use in order to tell a story for the most effective way possible. POV is the most important to consider when writing fiction, but is important in nonfiction narrative as well. So let's jump right into it. Let's start with the basics. What is point of view, Erin? So point of view is the perspective or the eye or narrative voice from which an author tells a story. So the story can be told from a character's point of view or from a perspective that sees and knows all of the characters, but is not one of them. So there are three main points of view. There's first person, second person, third person, and then third person is divided yet again. We'll get to that. So in first person, one of the characters is narrating the story. And the first person is usually revealed by the use of I and first person pronouns. So I wrote a book. And the reader can assume that this character is very close to the action, either a main character or someone close to the protagonist. Now with second person, this is less common in novels. Um, you see it more in nonfiction, uh, but it's structured around the pronoun you. So a, a line might be, you can see that times are difficult in this small town. Um, next is third person, and this is when an author refers to his characters as he or she in narration, uses names. Um, for instance, he was unsure about where to go next. And this third person POV, as I mentioned, is divided into third person omniscient and third person limited. Awesome. So why is point of view important? Well, the narrator's relationship to the story is determined by point of view. So each viewpoint allows certain freedoms in narration while limiting others. So your goal in setting uh, or finding your point of view and deciding on it before you be begin writing, it's not simply finding a way to give information, but you wanna tell it in the right way to make the world you create understandable and believable for the reader. So often writers don't really choose a POV for their project. Um, the novel chooses a POV for them or your nonfiction work. So in other words, if you're writing a sprawling epic, it wouldn't probably call for first person singular POV, the eyes, um, with your main character wondering what's going on back on their planet. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and a mystery wouldn't work well with an omniscient narrator, which is all knowing, who, you know, will jump into the murderer's head on page one and has the murderer think, yeah, I killed him. So there's different things you can play with with point of view, and it's very important. And often stories tell us how they should be told. And once you find the right POV for yours, you're likely going to figure out the story couldn't have been told another way. Really interesting. Definitely. So can you tell us a little bit about the pros and cons and of each POV? Yeah, and this is really important to think about before you decide. Um, for first person or the, the I, it's wonderful for establishing intimacy and giving the reader a closer look into the character's mind. So this is very powerful POV to use for character-driven stories where the individual's state of mind and development are really the focus of the book. But this is, it's limited by the character's ability to only perceive what's happening around him or her and what they would realistically know about the story. So you're kind of confined to that. So although the first person provides intimacy, it can also be limiting in what you're revealing to the reader. So if you have a large cast of characters, the first person POV can be limiting. Now with second person using the you, this POV can draw the reader into the story because the narrator is speaking directly to them. You're saying you as the reader. And so the reader is gonna feel as if they're part of the action. However, writing in this point of view for any length of time is extremely challenging and it's really gonna test your writing abilities. It's much more common in nonfiction. If you wanna test this out, try writing in second person. You'll see it's pretty tough. Um, now, third person, which is he or she, uh, this point of view is divided, as I mentioned, into limited and omniscient. So let's talk about those. For limited, the author stays closely with one character but remains in third person. So, for example, as he watched her walk away, he knew he would love her forever. And in third person limited, an author and reader can remain inside a character's head. And so you can reveal the thoughts, sensations, and feelings. And really, this is the most flexible point of view. 
And third person limited has some of the closeness of first person. So you can let us know a particular character's thoughts, feelings, and attitudes on the events, just like you can in first person. Uh, this POV also has the ability to pull back from the character a bit and offer a wider perspective. Um, you can also call out and reveal some subtle character biases in a way that you can't do in first person, but it's still limited again to one perspective. Now with omniscient, this is really interesting with third person omniscient, the narrator knows everything about the story and characters, even what the characters themselves do not know. So for example, omniscient POV would be, uh, he had made a horrible mistake, but he didn't know it yet. So in that line, the omniscient narrator knows, but the character himself doesn't know. And this POV is commonly linked to great works of classic literature. They used it a lot. It's good for big casts and complex plots. And this third person narrator can enter anyone's mind, any character, move freely through time. It can give the reader uh, their own opinions and observations as well as those of the characters. And this narrator also knows more than the characters. Um, so think of the omniscient narrator as having just a God's eye view of the characters, all knowing, omniscient. So this can have the benefit of providing comprehensive setting descriptions if you're world building um, or providing philosophical commentaries, digressions. And you can really, um, using this omniscient POV, you can explore parts of your world that might not be immediately apparent to your characters. Um, third person omniscient also allows a move between the perspectives of multiple major characters. It allows a writer to also really engage in an authorial voice. So the author's own voice. So if you look at a lot of classic novels, some of the pleasure of reading these novels is getting to spend time with the voice of Tolstoy or Jane Austen because you, they're using this omniscient narrator and that's the author themselves. So the omniscient narrator becomes uh, very real and present, just as the characters they're describing. Um, but of course, the con is that too much freedom can lead to a lack of focus. Um, you can get into too many characters' heads, which re doesn't really allow readers to ground themselves in one particular experience or perspective or character arc, basically doing too much. So that's the con of it as well. Awesome. Okay, so what are some important things to remember about point of view or POV, if you will? Well, the one thing I want to start with, because I see this so often, and is that you do not want to head hop within scenes or chapters. And an omniscient point of view should never be confused with head hopping, where the actual point of view switches from character to character mid scene, often in a very confusing way. And this can be very jarring for the reader and often beginning writers do this all the time. And they don't even realize it. So you always want to stick, not always, you usually want to stick to one point of view per scene or chapter, unless you're Hemingway, he was very good at doing this. Um, and once you establish your point of view, you want to establish it right away. And while you're in it, stick to it. So for example, if you're narrating from your main character's perspective and in the middle of a scene, you suddenly switch to a point of view of a different character, this disruption is going to completely rip your reader out of the story, which of course you don't want to do because they're going to be trying to figure out, okay, where are we now? Who's thinking now? It's just a really bad idea. So you want to be very mindful. Um, speaking of mindful, you want to be mindful of your point of view limitations. So one thing to do is check your writing frequently to make sure that your characters are not having viewpoints or information that they're not supposed to have in whatever point of view you've chosen. Um, also, you can change point of views in different subplots. But again, you want to make sure to do this only in a new chapter or scene to avoid that head hopping, uh, because that's really going to confuse the reader. And you can try out different points of view before you begin writing to see which one works best. Great way to do it. Awesome. Great, great, great advice when it comes to POV. So what is our assignment for this week? Uh, just tell this us. Is actually, yeah, this is actually really fun. And I love kind of this um, writing practice, but experiment with point of view in a single scene. So think of an event or use a scene you've already written that involves at least three characters and then write about this event from these three different points of view. Uh, you want to try out first person and third person 
or second person, if you're feeling really adventurous. And after you've written your scenes, review them and ask yourself, how did the point of view change the story, which felt most natural to you and which felt most compelling? And then you can start to see what kind of point of view you might wanna work with. Love it. A great creative exercise for POV. Erin, thank you so much. This was so insightful, so informative. I learned a lot. So thank you guys for tuning in. We wanted to add a little bit of spice to this <laughs> remote writing workshop with my fun Zoom background. Oh, yeah, so cool. Ooh. Right? Um, okay. So thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you guys next time. As always, we love to hear your suggestions for topics and for content. So let us know if there's anything in particular you want to hear from us and everybody have a wonderful weekend.